Jagex has done it again. On February 23rd, Osgo RuneScape had a little celebration for its 10th birthday, and with the rewards from the seasonal event, just like the seasonal Christmas event 2 months ago, level 3s were once again fooled. This time, one of the rewards was a Dragon Candle Dagger, a new fun weapon with stat bonuses to guarantee hit a zero. Two months ago, they added a similar weapon that was a guarantee splash, and a couple level 3s complained about it devaluing their Slayer achievements, so Jagex quickly reverted it back in the next update. Since then, a couple level 3s, including myself, have been reaching out to Jagex to try to bring back a splash weapon. We haven't heard anything for certain, but we do know that when this update hit, there was another splash weapon in the game, and we thought, surely they wouldn't make the same mistake just two months later. But alas, they did. The dev didn't know about December's change, which fair enough, I mean the level 3 community is very small anyway. However, now I knew I had one week to gain a proper Slayer XP rate. And it took me two days to officially decide to put my Max Cape speedrun series on pause, but the last five days I was able to grind Slayer on my main with 200 mil all and no 99 Slayer. I should have decided this in December when it was in the game for three weeks, but my mindset at the time was that if it's not staying, it won't matter since I'll never get level 99 anyway. However, this time, there was a bit more incentive. Recently, Jagex added high scores for level 3s, which obviously includes Slayer level. However, with current Slayer methods, the maximum being an AFK 2k an hour, many level 3s don't consider Slayer's skill to be max, since it's an unreasonable 7000 hours for 99. And so, because of this, I'm ranked 5 on the high scores, despite being the only level 3 with 200 mil XP in every trainable skill. This time, I figured that if I have a week to gain some proper Slayer XP rates, screw it, let's do it. So I headed to the wilderness to grab some tasks, and last time, I predicted this method to be about 10 to 12k an hour once I've mastered it, and man, was I wrong in the best ways possible. Before we jump into XP rates, I want to let you guys know that today's sponsor is actually our brand new partner, and this partner is Gamersups, and I'm now with them for the next 6 months. These guys supply some great caffeine choices. Right now, we are offering free samples that require absolutely no payment information. I've tried their caffeine tubs for about a month, and at this point, I gotta say, they're honestly great. There's zero sugar, zero calories, and zero carbs. I personally love caffeine and energy drinks, and these are a healthier and cheaper alternative to any other drinks because they come in a tub of 60 or even 100 servings per flavor. Since it's a powder drink, you can give yourself 100 or 200 milligrams of caffeine per drink, and it's just enough for me to personally enjoy sipping on during a nice gaming session. I personally have tried their dragon fruit punch, peach tea, strawberry, and pineapple flavors so far, and they're all great. They even have some fun names like guacamole gamer fart 9000 if that's what you're into. This one tastes like Baja Blast, so I'm sure you will like it. If you're not a caffeine guy, they also offer drinks that are caffeine free. The main purpose of this product is to get you to start drinking more water, and with this drink, you'll have water that tastes great to keep yourself hydrated. To use my code for free samples, just check out the description below. It's only for the next 24 hours that you can receive samples completely for free, including shipping. And if you want to buy more than samples, the code will give you 10% off plus free shipping. I hope you guys enjoy it and thank you to Gamersups for this great offer. Now let's head back to Training Slayer. One of the first tasks that I got was the Black Demon task. I figured that this would long term be one of my best tasks, and I had a lot of testing to do. Naturally, the first two days of this update was me debating if I should enjoy the splash weapon for the week that it was in the game. But I spoke to a couple level 3s that were already enjoying it, and it helped motivate me to spend my time at work creating a spreadsheet for RuneScape, trying to optimize this method the best way we could. One of the first things we needed was the XP per hour information on every task. So early on, I was resetting my tracker every new assignment that I got. Just a quick refresher for those who don't know what's going on, I get half the Slayer XP for each kill where I do the final hit. When my weapon hits a zero in the same tick that my other account hits with the Webweaver bow, it counts as JCW, the level 3, doing the final hit, so I'm rewarded with half XP and it counts as a KC towards my task. The reason I'm in the wilderness is because this Slayer Master doesn't consider your combat level when assigning you stuff, so I end up killing big black monster demons like these guys that give 100 Slayer XP each, instead of the other Slayer Master which would assign me goblin and cows which are like 3 XP each. If you look at one of my plugins, there's a timer going down with the demon picture on it. This is my aggression timer. It's essential for me to try to make sure I'm nowhere near the demons as they spawn, because otherwise they could one hit me. However, once this timer is up, I'm free to walk wherever because they won't be aggressive anymore. This is the hardest part of this method, the first 10 minutes of every task. 
Things get a lot easier and quicker once you're not aggressive. But the worst thing ever though is when you die because the 10 minute timer restarts itself and trust me, it's infuriating. Here's a great example of me thinking I'm safe and quickly finding out that I'm not. I wanted the XP an hour to be as accurate and realistic as possible, so despite all of these deaths, I wasn't resetting my tracker. I know I got my hopes up very early when I saw even with a very scuffed task, I was still getting 17k an hour. Fast forwarding about 20 minutes, I still have time on my dredging timer because I died again after this. But thankfully, we just have two left and then we're good to go to the next task. And here I get hit a 5, but thankfully I instantly ate. Obviously though, the demon still one hits me for an 11. So yeah, it was pretty impressive that I didn't rage quit at this point, not even 3 hours into the method. And soon after finally getting back for the 100th time, we were finally free from this task, and like I said, still getting an insane rate despite dying so many times. With this, we're off to get our new task. Spiders. Last time I got assigned these, I thought they were a skip task because these are most commonly known for cannoning as level 2s for a quick task for points. I'm not going to kill level 2s because I'll get 1 Slayer XP each, however, this time I was well informed that there are level 61 spiders in a multi-combat area where I can do the same method I did here with black demons. So that is where we are headed. Couple things I quickly learned about this task. It's around a hotspot PKer area, so Falwick is being attacked every 5 seconds, and also, the spiders have a really annoying aggression mechanic where they'll randomly switch to JCW, so I have to be extra careful. These didn't seem like the greatest task, but I'm still very early on, and I'm trying to get XP rates for every task on the spreadsheet, so I can optimize things later on. So, because it's multi-combat, I'm slaughtering this task to make it longer so I have a better idea of the XP rates. Last time I did Slayer, I had to do a lot of single combat tasks. Those were all 2 to 3k an hour, and long term, I really don't want to ever have to touch those. I literally just got back in this clip from being PK'd, and one minute later, in a different world, I'm being attacked again. You might be wondering why I'm dropping my pots, so let me explain this nice mechanic that was purposely put in the wilderness. Wilderness drop mechanics are different than anywhere else. For example, when I drop a normal item on the top left account, it instantly shows in the other one. This is done on purpose. However, look what happens when I drop a potion. The other account doesn't see it, and they never do. They removed this because people were dropping potions and food for each other while being attacked. So, whenever I got attacked by a PK in the wildy, this is what I did to save myself some GP and to prevent PKers from getting more than they deserve. I dropped my whole inventory of potions. Then, you let the PKers do their thing while you don't fight back. After dying, you can go gear up, which I'll skip in this example since I wasn't wearing anything. But then I hop worlds. Despite being in a different world, my potions will still be there so I can pick them up. I don't know how long they will stay there for, but I've had them disappear if I went AFK for 5 minutes at the bank, but I've also taken a few minutes to get back and they were still there. So maybe 3-5 to five minutes would be my guess, but it doesn't matter anyway, it's a great mechanic. When you die, you pretty much only lose charges in your bow, which for the most part is relatively cheap. Heading back to the spider task, after being PK'd countless times and then also dying on GCW to some spiders, we finished a task around 6.5k an hour. It kinda sucked, but the good news is that was our 30th task, and with that we get a 125 point boost. So, I decided to extend Black Demons so that my next assignment will be nearly double the kills since I know for a fact they are a good task. My next task that I'll be doing is in singles, and it's bears. These are the tasks that I dread because they're only 2-3k an hour, but let's make our way there. Since these are in single combats, I can't attack them in the same take as Falwick using a webweaver bow, so I have to kill it using modern day recoil mechanics. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with recoil rings, where a level 3 basically gets a monster to attack them and they kill it with the ring because every time the monster does damage, the ring does one damage back at the NPC. This was pretty common 10 years ago, but the more modern method is to venom it using an ult, because venom does 6 to 10 damage over time constantly. So all I have to do is venom a single bear, get it as low HP as possible without killing it, and then tag it on GCW. From there, I just have to wait for the venom to kill it. Truly, you can see why this is so slow comparative to multi-combat tasks, but I do have two walls of venoming to speed things up. Fast forwarding a bit, I got a mammoth task and I think this is where I officially concluded that there are going to be a lot of tasks over 15k an hour. 
including the 10 minutes of being careful before my aggression timer ran out and making sure that GCW doesn't get attacked. I'm getting 19k an hour at this task, which is insane, this is 10 times better than the current AFK museum method. It looks like the next task I got was Hellhounds, which I unfortunately realized that now I forgot to record. But they were the same concept as Black Demons, they were multi-combat and in the Slayer Caves. Fast forwarding after that task, I got my first ever Dark Warriors task. I came directly from my Hellhound task, which is well over 15k an hour, so I wanted to see if I could finish this task and still maintain over 15k. It was crazy satisfying seeing a full hour's worth of XP done at over 15k. Coming up at the end of the task, I managed to get my rate up to 16k. I'm not sure exactly what XP that means I was getting, but I'm sure it was well over 17. Anyway, now I had 235 points and extended Black Demons already. So it was at this point that I concluded I'm going to try to never do a single combat task again. So hopefully getting 10k an hour or even 15k an hour long term shouldn't be that hard now. My next task actually had me yelling with excitement. 225 Black Demons with Slaughter Bracelets. This is an average of 303 kills, which is 30.3k Slayer XP from just one task. No moving, no resetting aggression timer, obviously assuming I don't die, but all of this for an hour and a half to two hours. It was going to be epic. One thing I learned about level 3 Slayer pretty early on, is that because of the first 10 minutes of the task you have to be more careful, the XP rates of every task during that time is significantly lower than after. After the 10 minutes is up, your XP starts flying because you can get more comfortable attacking monsters. Because of this, Black Demons were by far the best tasks I could receive since overall of all the tasks I can get, these were the most XP gained per task. Fast forwarding a bit, I started this week of Slayer 150k off of level 88. Many tasks later, I landed myself another Black Demon task and this would send me my level up. After leveling up, it's 450k XP for level 88 to 89. It was already Sunday at this point, so I had to think if it was realistic or not that I could get 450k XP in a mere 3 days before the nerf on Wednesday. One more total level would have been ideal. And it looks like Jagex wanted me to as well, because in that same task I got a genie, which was a free 880 Slayer XP. So that gently helped me a bit as well. Near the end of the task, and with over 50k Slayer XP gained on the tracker now, it was time for a new task. Like I said, I have enough points now to hopefully never get a single combat task again, so it was a matter of skip every task we can until we get something we like. And we did, 120 minutes. You might think that I'd be bored getting the same couple tasks over and over again, but what a lot of you probably don't know about me is that I'm also 200 mil all stats in Artist 3, and that includes combats. When I did 200 mil Slayer, I legit did the same 4 tasks for 13 to 200 mil Slayer XP. It was one of my favorite skills in that game. However, that was in 2015, so it's been a minute. This might sound dumb, but being 1 4th of the way to level 89 now, I realized that during my last 200k XP, I have been using a blowpipe plus Surf Helm on my ult, and nothing else. I was basically hurting myself DPS for absolutely no reason. The blowpipe and Surf combo was useful when I was doing singles tasks because it was a guaranteed Venom. But now it's useless. So I decided to buy Dragonhide and some DPS items to really try hard a greater demon task. I AFK'd for 10 minutes while waiting for my aggro to die down because I had to do some stuff IRL anyway. And then I reset my XP tracker to see what XP rates were really possible if I was potentially hitting every single tick on both accounts with rigor on each. And holy shit guys, I was so shocked to see how much XP an hour was actually possible. I think in the past tasks, I was just kind of lazily making sure that I always hit the final hit on my bow account to get the Slayer XP. But now that I'm nerd necking and trying to blowpipe every 2 ticks with DPS gear as well, the difference in XP went from 18k to 25k. There were only 2 days left in this weapon at this point, and I was just getting excited about the rates I could get again, and I knew I had to test it. So naturally, I did what any level 3 with 200 mil all who only needs 99 Slayer left and only had 2 days left to train would do. I called out of work sick on Tuesday so that I can slay all day on 2007 paint game. So on my way to get my next task and I just want to say, getting exactly back to back of greater demons when they're 25k an hour and they assign 200 at once felt great. Despite those graders being 25k an hour, black demons are even better. These guys have more HP so it's easier to swap on my blowpipe ball and not accidentally kill them. And it's legit 30k XP gained per task. So I get to relax here for an hour before having to move. 
Anyway, not that points even matter for me, but here I am hitting my 50th task for the juicy point boost. After skipping two more tasks, I got Ankus, and then here I remember that I can extend them, so I do that real quick. This should be my last unlock ever, so it'll be fun to see how many Slayer points I end up profiting since Wildy is so good for them. And on my day off, I ended up doing a huge Slayer stream. As I'm wrapping up this Black Demon task, I get in a deep conversation with my chat about Boss Slayer. For those that don't know, many years ago, before Splash Weapon, there was something called Partner Slayer. This was a function in the game that made it so two different people can get assigned the same task together, since you had two people getting assigned one task, the game took the person getting the task Slayer Unlock into account when giving out the task. This was abused by main accounts and so it was removed. The way it was abused is, let's say you get a task with your alt. Your alt would have less quests completed and a certain block list to where you'd get assigned less tasks than normal. When joining a party with your alt, you could wait until you got the most OP task, such as Smoke Devils. And if you got something else, you would just go to Turiel and do it on your alt while training something else on your main. This guaranteed that every time you were slaying on your main, you were getting 180k an hour because you were only doing smoke devils. So I understand why it got removed. However, what a lot of people don't know is that this was the only method level 3s had to train Slayer besides the museum. Basically what level 3s would do is they would get a task with partner Slayer, have more blocks on the ult, and do the same method. Except instead of smoke devils, they would only go to boss Slayer tasks. Ball Slayer tasks are good because when they are assigned, the player can choose how many they want to kill from 3 to 35. In this method, the level 3 would choose 3, and at the end of the task, there would be an extra 5000 Slayer XP drop for completing a boss task. It was possible to do this for 99 Slayer because you only had to tag a boss once for a 5000 XP drop. This is how the first level 3 with 99 Slayer got it. However, because of main accounts, they happened to nerf this the same week I finished 200 mil all, so that was quite unlucky. Anyway, I was avoiding boss slayer due to the wildy update recently, which made 3 wildy bosses non-safe spottable and in multi-combat. Now I know absolutely zero about wildy bosses for slayer, I have never done them in my entire life. But I was educated by my chat on how you can still do the ones that were changed in singles, and there are actually 11 different bosses to be assigned. Before talking to the chat, I thought it was half of that, and I didn't want to spend 3 out of 5 bosses trying to kill them in the multi-cave. So, with this knowledge, I decided to unlock Boss Slayer. Notice how on my screen, the unlock doesn't mention Crystalia giving boss tasks, so I hesitated for quite a while whether I should buy it or not, but in the end, I decided I don't need the points anyway. Thankfully, I somehow get assigned a boss task immediately after unlocking it, so this was perfect. So let's head to the crazy archaeologist. I forgot to record the first couple kills, but also please remember that I did say I've never done any bosses in the wilderness. You can clearly tell in this clip. I was using a webweaver bow because I was so sure that since it's a lower level boss it would be easy to kill, and I was very very wrong. I mean, my strategy was to lower the HP as much as I can, and then I would walk in with the blowpipe and serp helm to venom it when it was nearly dead. After it was venomed, I would tag it on JCW and get the kill when the venom kills it. I also brought veggies to speed things up a bit, but I still had no idea what I was doing, so I died a lot on JCW. This task was kind of a clusterfuck and probably barely worth doing, but the 5k XP drop felt really nice. Over time, I get a lot better, and these will hopefully only take 5 to 10 minutes max. Look at that juice, guys. 5,000 Slayer XP. I'm gonna fast forward to the end of that day, where I managed to hold 17k an hour for 10 hours without pausing the tracker. I love the XP rate and overall the method as well, so here I am hitting my goal of 89 Slayer 5 hours before the weekly update. And so, after 4 hours of sleep and a 9 hour workday, I returned home to a nerfed weapon. It was quite sad, however, I am very pleased to say that for once at least, I saw a response from Jagex White mentioning how they plan on finally addressing this problem in Pole 79, so I look really forward to it. If this thing were to pass, I would 100% be finally completing my 99 Slayer for 1600 total on the high scores from this account. Potentially even some post 99 XP as well. I'm confident that a lot of the level 3 community wants this in the game. It does generally unlock a lot of hours of content, and in my opinion, it's very well balanced considering all things. Being in the wilderness, requiring other accounts, 
and bearing in mind that the only other method is 2k an hour and AFK. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. With all that being said, I'm going to end the video here now. TY to all of you who watched this far. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you haven't. Peace out guys.